The inevitable ball has finally happened. The Toronto Raptors have traded Pascal Siakam to the Indiana Pacers in return for three first-round picks, Bruce Brown, Jordan Nawara, and Kier Lewis Jr. from the New Orleans Pelicans. Let's break this trade down. Indiana was a team that was highly rumored to be in the Pascal Siakam sweepstakes, and honestly, it came down to them and the Sacramento Kings, who recently pulled out of the trade talks. The market for Pascal was actually an ever-changing one. As Pascal himself came out and said whatever team he gets traded to, there's a low chance he's going to re-sign. So teams that do trade for him are going to have to take a risk, bite the bullet, and give up valuable assets for a player who might only be there for half a year. If Pascal had actually offered some sort of commitment to whatever team he was going to go to, maybe the Raptors could have got back a player like Benedict Matherin or Jairus Walker, a young player with a lot of potential. For Indiana, this pairs their generational young point guard talent in Tyrese Halliburton with a big man who can space the floor, create his own shot, and is a pretty good finisher inside with a nice soft touch around the rim. Pascal is known to use his lanky frame and good footwork to generate lots of different shots around the rim and has also shown improvement as a playmaking and defensive player over the past couple years. The Pacers are currently 23-17, and 17, stuck in the middle of the second tier of teams in the Eastern Conference at seed 6. In the Eastern Conference, we know there's the first tier, the three main championship contenders. That's the Sixers, Bucks, and Celtics. And after that, that's where things get a little bit jumbly. You have the Cavs, who have actually been surging without Evan Mobley and Darius Garland. Then you have the Pacers, who have been playing really well with Tyrese, but kind of needed to get him a second star. You have the Magic, who have been playing really well under the duo of Franz Wagner and Paolo Boncaro, but they've been slumping for a little bit. You have the Knicks, who are new and improved after the OG Ananobi trade. And you have the Miami Heat, a team who doesn't really perform as well in the regular season, but come playoff time, you know how dangerous they can be. And by doing this trade, I think the Pacers can actually put themselves farther apart from these other four Eastern Conference teams. Slotting Pascal in at the four will bolster the Indiana defense, which has been one of the worst in the NBA. Putting Siakam next to Miles Turner, a stretch five who can shoot very well from three, would also minimize Siakam's liability of being a bad three-point shooter, and their front court would have lots of defensive versatility. For Indiana, the number one priority this offseason would be to make sure that Pascal Siakam is getting extended on a long-term deal and if they can, they're gonna try to offer him the Supermax just to make him happy and to keep him put in Indiana. This trade kind of takes some pressure off of Tyrese Halliburton because if you look at the rest of the Pacers roster, you have guys like Benedict Matherin, Miles Turner, Buddy Heald, and a lot of guys who you couldn't pencil one in as your guaranteed bona fide second scorer. And now with Pascal Siakam, a guy I'm going to mention later has had a lot of experience leading a Raptors team, he actually plays much better in a second role and having Pascal Siakam as your second best player alongside a very good facilitating, shot creating, playmaking point guard who's really young is going to be really good for the Pacers. With this trade, they can jump some of those teams I mentioned previously and by the end of the season, I think their goal is to get to 4 or 5 and with 4 or 5, we can see them make some real playoff noise and the Cavs have been surging of late without Evan Mobley and Darius Garland, so it's going to be scary because now it looks like Donovan Mitchell isn't getting traded, so the Cavs are going to be looked at as a real threat again. With Pascal though, Indiana is going to look much better and their rotation is going to get much more deep. Bruce Brown did start every game for Indiana this season, so Pascal is going to pretty much fill in those minutes in a little bit more. Bruce Brown averaged a career high 12 points per game and Pascal has averaged a consistent 20 plus and this season he's averaging 22. This season he's shooting 52% from the field, 31% from three, and 75% from the free throw line. Again, not the best three point and free throw marks. But considering the rest of the players around him and how much better opportunities he'll get with a real point guard like Tyrese Halburn, it's going to be interesting to see how it all works out. I think Indiana has a bright future, especially if they do re-sign Pascal, a guy who can turn into a perennial all-star in a very, very, very good second option. Now let's head over to Toronto's side. For the past couple seasons, Siakam has been tasked with being the leader of the Raptors franchise. He's a two-time All-Star and two-time All-NBA nominee. However, the results of the team have been a bit disappointing. The team had one playoff run in Scotty Barnes' rookie season, but it was ended by Joel Embiid and the Sixers. Since then, they've been in play-in conversations, but have always fell at the very end of the lottery, not being able to go super down where they can get a high pick, or not being able to be such a good team where they can make some noise in the playoffs. Change was needed, and slowly the Raptors players from the 2019 championship team started to get dealt. 
First, Fred Van Vliet left in free agency, and then recently, Masai Ujiri made a trade where he sent OJ Anobi, the stellar 3 and D player, to the New York Knicks in exchange for young shot creator Emmanuel Quickly and Canadian RJ Barrett, who's been inconsistent. And now, by making this trade with the Pacers, everybody on the 2019 roster is off the Raptors except for Chris Boucher. It's truly a new time in Toronto, and by making this trade, they're ceding to their youth movement. They know Scotty Barnes is their leader and putting him around pieces like Emmanuel Quickly and RJ Barrett and Bruce Brown is going to be the future of Toronto. Let's take a look at the picks for Toronto. They get three first round picks, two of which are Indiana's. One is the 2024 pick and one is the 2026 pick. I think the 2024 pick will fall somewhere between like 20 to 25. That could be a decent pick for Toronto in this draft, which isn't as top heavy with a lot of decent talents, but no one big Hall of Famer that just pops out. And also, they get the worst of OKC, the Clippers, Utah, and Houston's pick. So out of those four teams, whichever team does worse, that pick will be conveyed to Toronto. I think that's either going to be Utah or Houston. And considering how those teams are doing now, Utah has actually been surging of late. They're 16-4 and in their last 20 games. They've been one of the better teams recently and I think they're going to end the season around 500. Houston, on the contrary, started off hot. They haven't been doing as well recently. So both these teams are going to be around 9 to 11 seeds, play-in teams, but I doubt both of them are going to make the playoffs. That's going to give the Raptors a lottery pick. Considering the chance that they get their own pick this year is very unlikely as it is a top 6 protected pick that will go to the Spurs. So they won't get their own pick this year, but they're going to make up with it having two first round picks and also picking up the Detroit Pistons second round pick in the OG and trade, a pick that will end up being around like 31 to 33. Pretty much a late first round pick if you look at it. I'm kind of intrigued by this return for Toronto because not only do you get a lot of first round picks, you also get a very, very good player in Bruce Brown. Bruce Brown was the catalyst for the Nuggets playoff run and one of the biggest factors in them winning the finals. He's averaging a career high points and 12 points per game, although he is on an expensive two year $45 million contract. I could see Masai actually using Bruce Brown as trade bait in the future, but I don't think he's going to flip him right this second away. Bruce Brown is still only 27 years old, so he could provide some good minutes in the front court and actually stick with this team for a good amount of time until he is a free agent again. Given the circumstances and scenario with Pascal not committing to any team he truly goes to, that did put them in a weird position where they had to accept some role players and some players who didn't have the best potential alongside picks. Their ideal trade is a couple first round picks alongside Benedict Matherin and Jairus Walker. I mean, Jairus Walker is the 8th pick in the draft, we saw how good he was at Houston, and Benedict Matherin is in a bit of a sophomore slump, but he had very good months in his rookie season, and one of the best players off the bench in the entire league. In the OG Ananobi trade, we saw Masai Ujiri take back quickly and bear it, rather than any type of New York Knicks picks, because if you look at a future pick, when a team does get that, they're going to perform much better, so that pick will only end up being around 20. So this Pacers pick in 2026, again, I think it's going to be a late first round pick. We'll see if the Raptors can package that and get some future talent or whether they can actually draft out of that spot and improve the roster at that time. This is again just the Raptors moving into their youth movement and building the entire team around one main guy, which is Scotty Barnes. We've known it's been Toronto's agenda for the past couple years. We were wondering why they didn't blow it up at last year's deadline. But finally, it has happened and Toronto is moving forward in a new direction, which I am excited for as a Raptors fan, because although I do love the past teams that have been in Toronto 2019 and 2020, I do think they have run their course and Masai Ujiri can orchestrate and build a new lineup, a new team that is young and will also be a playoff team to come for this long time. The two pieces many people aren't really talking about in this deal are Jordan Nawara and Kira Lewis Jr. Both these players are young, but play reserve roles on their respective roster. Kira Lewis is a first round pick from the Pelicans who actually played a bunch in his early days, but now with the Pelicans having so much great depth like Jose Alvarado and Dyson Daniels at the point guard position, he really hasn't found much minutes. He's only averaging around two points and an assist this season. Jordan Nomura is a reserve for the Pacers. He used to be on the Bucks, but now on the Pacers, he doesn't get many minutes this year. He's averaging five points. It's going to be interesting to see if the Raptors deploy Kira Lewis as a backup point guard, as they did Malachi Flynn, who got traded to the Knicks. And if they do want Kira Lewis to be the backup point guard and see some potential there, I could see them actually flipping Dennis Schroeder, a player who kind of signed up to be a starting point guard, but now Scotty Barnes has kind of taken over it, and as well as Manuel quickly playing a lot of the point guard minutes. So we could see them flipping Dennis Schroeder. 
Overall though, this trade is a win-win for both teams. For Toronto, again, they're moving into their youth movement, they like to accumulate picks, and there are two picks that are actually turned out to be pretty decent in this year's draft as they look to build a team around some of their best young players featuring Scotty Barnes and Emmanuel quickly. For Indiana, Pascal Siakam is a great second star, second option, a guy who can average 20 plus points per game and will be a great backhand player to Tyrese Halliburton. The big issue is if they can lock him down for a long term contract. If not, they did take a big risk and if it doesn't pan out, that's going to be unfortunate for Indiana who only have Siakam services for half a year before he's an unrestricted free agent. Thank you guys for watching this video. I'll catch you soon. This is my full breakdown and analysis of the Pascal Siakam to Indiana trade. Thank you guys for watching and bye.